The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, the Money Masters. The Money Masters. Good day, Money Masters and Treasure Hunters. Welcome to the April 22nd Marvelous Monday edition of the Money Masters Show. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, and I am grateful for your presence here today, folks. My outcome, as always, is to help you to become a better Money Master and to provide you with the tools that empower human potential. Because living up to our potential is something we must master each and every day. So let's begin with an empowering thought or set of thoughts out here. A real decision, folks. A real decision is measured by the fact that you've taken a new action. That's right, a new action. You know, if there's no action, you haven't fully decided. In essence, if we want to direct our lives, we must take control of our consistent actions. It's not what we do once in a while that shapes our lives, but what we do consistently. And when it comes to action, folks, I say take massive action. And always remember, the way you do anything is the way you do everything. Become a pioneer of your future versus a prisoner of your past. Let's go see if this market is taking prisoners here right now. We've got the Ed Dow trading down 45 points out at 14.503. S&P up about three points at 15.52. Composite is up two. Russell 2000 down nine points out here off a full percentage point. Russell 2000. We know where the weak link is. Certainly is in the uh, Russell. Google's off seven bucks, giving back some of its gains from uh, Friday. Only some of its gains. Apple's up about six bucks right now. Trade at three ninety six. Microsoft up a buck twenty seven, having a, a nice morning. Intel off a penny. Cisco down five. Popping to the upside. The leader in the clubhouse at this moment is Biogen. B I I B up three and seven tenths percent. Up a little over seven bucks. Netflix right behind him, up uh, six dollars and fifty cents. Up four percent as well. Then. Apple down up about uh, six bucks. Celgene, C E L G up four bucks. Uh, Met Pro up three fifty. Six Flags Entertainment, S I X is the uh, ticker symbol. Having a nice uh, ride here. Looks like they're going up the hill. Maybe it's going to have a roller coaster to the downside. I haven't looked at their stock chart, but we could look at it and find out. They are up five bucks or five percent right now. Up three dollars and forty cents out there. If we take a look to the uh, downside, Google leading the charge of the downside off eight bucks. Intuitive Surgical. Be just behind them, off 768, off 1.5% out there. Ralph Lauren, RL, off 250. Chipotle, which had one heck of a uh, move on Friday, is off a buck 87 right now. X1, that is the uh, th one of the 3D software companies. They're off 6%. So that is a, a new IPO out there. We'll take a look at the, that stock chart. And then Panera Bread down 2 bucks. Our call number is 877-927-6648. We'd love to hear from you, folks. Give us a call. Well, let's go start off by taking a look at the uh, indexes out here. Let's take a look at Friday's session as well. First, though, we'll start off by taking a look at the 30-minute uh, chart of the uh, Dow Futures. Now, if you're listening in on the radio or tfnn.mobi, thanks so much for doing that. Remember, you can always catch the live stream of this show. That way you'll be able to see the uh, charts. You can follow along. Just go to the homepage of tfnn.com. On the right-hand side, you'll see a little button there with three smartphones. Uh, go ahead and click on that. This show will stream live to your smartphone, your pad, or what have you. And you can always catch the archive of the Money Master Show on Channel Time. How about that? That was 9 and 10 put together. Really, you've got to tune in to Channel 10, though. Now, if we take a look at the uh, at the Dow Futures, what the Dow Futures are doing, they're coming back against an area that thus far has held as support. So we're going to see if it's going to try to bust through this area. Uh, last time that the Dow was down here was on Friday morning. Friday morning, you saw this little bullish engulfing that candle. It's where the Dow had a little bit of a reversal. It was quite a, quite a reversal when you consider that it came off of its uh, session low as it got down to 14.407 and closed slightly up 
on a Friday out there, and that with IBM being down big. With volume, price, it had the whole thing, the whole kit and caboodle. But we do have here, volume-wise, was not enough to push it uh, down. Uh, we'll see right now what uh, what the Dow futures are doing. They're coming into that swing point low at 10 o'clock in the morning on April 19th. That's got 24,000 contracts out here. Uh, even during the uh, 10 o'clock session, 9.30 to 10, there was only 15,000 contracts. So it's going to need some giddy-up and go if it's going to take out these lows. That's what the 30-minute chart is showing us. Now let's go take a look at the daily chart and see what we're up against here. And that is a, a beautiful thing. And that I'm referring to is Friday's candle session. Now, when we take a look at the Dow here, what you're looking at is you're looking at a rising price channel. Now, the blue diagonal lines that you're looking at on my screen here, that's where I've identified the uh, largest number of co-located opens and closes. doesn't matter to me whether it's an open or a uh, close. And I'm beginning with the uh, trading session of November 16th. So this is on what we'll call, on a, even though I'll call this more of an ultra-short-term chart because it's the daily chart only going back to November 16th versus the rising price channel coming off out of the uh, March 09 lows but coming off of the uh, and this is plenty of time here to establish a uh, trend so we're using the open of the session from november 16th i'm basically using what looks like very close to the close of december 31st the open of january 2nd also uses the close of february 25th and just slightly above the open on february the 26th out there what happened on friday was price moved down into this uh, rising price channel. And that diagonal price channel held out there. Again, what we're looking at now is actually the Dow Jones Industrial uh, uh, Average. We're looking to look at the uh, daily chart that way if you're following along with us on uh, Tiger TV or on your charting at home. Now, the candle that uh, that it confirmed or that it that it uh, created on Friday. Very important candle. Why? I'm going to go ahead and blow this up here for you because that is one of yours and mine. That is one of our most bullish candles, most bullish one-day candle that you can form out here. That is a hammer candle. Now, could have been just a, a little bit better. You can see a little bit of a wick on the uh, top of the uh, candle out here. That's okay. You can have a small amount of the uh, wick. You can see that intraday, the high was 14,553.73, and it closed at 14,547 out there. So it's okay. Qualifies as a hammer candle. Now, this candle right over here, this actually was not a hammer candle. That candle being April 5th. And quite frankly, that was actually a bearish candle. That was a dark cloud cover. And why is that so important? You can see right now the Dow is trading underneath that rising price channel. But the real key, forget the rising price channel because horizontal lines of resistance or horizontal resistance period, always more important than diagonal uh, resistance or support. In this case here, you're looking at Friday's low. That number, 14,444.03. Forget the point zero three. You get a close below 14,444, and it will be like cutting down a tree, folks. It will be saying timber down below. And that down below, where will the uh, timber, where will that tree fall? It will fall all the way down to the next set of swing points which inside the uh, Dow will take you all the way back to February 26, 2013, that low, 13,784. That is where it wants to head to longer term. But right now on Friday, what the uh, bulls were able to do, they were able to form that uh, hammer candle. They were also able to keep price inside that rising price channel. We'll see how this day plays out. But the line's been drawn to the sand. If you're not short, you don't have to jump in right now. In fact, all you have to do is watch that hammer candle inside the Dow. That is going to be a very, very did I say that? Very? I did. It's going to be a very important uh, area to be watching. That is on the Dow. You normally start off by taking a look at the S&P 500, but not today on Marvelous Monday. We'll go to the S&P 500 in a moment. The next hammer candle that we've got out here is on the trannies. So now we're taking a look at the Dow Jones transports out here. The Dow Jones transports on April the 5th, they did create the hammer candle. Unlike the Dow on that same day, even though it looks like a hammer candle, smells like a hammer candle, it doesn't taste like a hammer candle. However, on the transports it is. And that low out here is 587812. That's another number you're going to want to be watching. You can see as the transports were moving down, they were running into this uh, morning star uh, candle formation out here in the transports. That was a three day bullish candle pattern. That was on February 25th, the 26th, and the 27th out there. So we know that's where the uh, bulls are hanging out. You get a close below the hammer of 5878. Really, the number you're looking for is going to be a close below that morning star, which is the February 26th low. And that'll be 57 89 20 if you're going to try to put the entire dow together those are the two that you're going to be wanting to watch those are the two that you're going to want to uh, watch to see because if you get a close below that 
That says right here that you go all the way back to December 31st. December 31st. There is nothing to hold the transports uh, in play out here until you get all the way back to December 31st. That level is 53, oh, uh, 50, 52, 10, 30 out here. So that's what you're going to want to be putting together, in my opinion, on the uh, Dow. Of course, the other side of uh, what you're going to want to be putting together is what's going on inside the uh, equities here at IBM is going to be one that you're going to want to be paying attention to. So let's go over and take a look at IBM. See what it is doing here uh, this morning. Uh, where is IBM? It should have been right out here on my charts. How about that? It wasn't. Oh, it's probably on the show charts here. Show tunes out here. Let's go take a look at uh, IBM again. Uh, where is it? Yep, there we go. So IBM trading a bit lower, but, boy, it had volume coming out of its uh, balloon on Friday. Big volume. Haven't seen that kind of volume in uh, what we'll have to say. Last time you saw that kind of volume inside IBM, you'd have to go all the way back to June 6th. 2007 and June 6 2007 closed at 10241 opened at uh, 105 so that was another day where you saw a little bit of a, a sell off and uh, so that is important to take a look at that kind of volume now when I say volume as far as uh, shares on Friday it did 2.5 uh, I'm sorry 18.8 million shares I knew that didn't sound right. It's already done 2.5 million shares today. IBM now giving us the clear indication, even though it has moved into that oversold condition, IBM wants to run all the way back into the uh, January 19th uh, level. It'll be interesting to see if that level will hold. It's really going to be the volume that we measure down there, which is going to be at the 182.36-ish range. That level has held as support before, but you're going to want to see volume in IBM coming back into that area on lighter than uh, 4.9 million shares out there. So today would not be that uh, day. But that is where IBM is headed. We'll see if that area can hold. If that area does not hold, then what we're really looking at, if you take a look at this, and we'll use the conservative approach here. Let's use a conservative, uh, and we're looking at it as a consolidation pattern because really you could say that IBM has been consolidating ever since the uh, January 2012 time frame. So what? We're talking about 16 months or so. Let's use a black line across the uh, screen here. And, and just like we've uh, done when we take a look at uh, gold and given a uh, price projection, uh, just like we have on Walmart as it's broken above its uh, consolidation level, you do the same thing here in inside IBM. So we're going to use right around, uh, we're going to just simply round. So we're going to use 200 bucks as the upper portion of the uh, consolidation range, and we're going to use the uh, low of, we'll just use 180. So now what we're talking about is a 20-point range, if, in fact, this 182-ish level doesn't hold. That says IBM will want to move all the way back down to about 162 bucks. $162 takes you all the way back into the lows of August of 2011. So watching IBM will be important. Look, it's going to have to work off this oversold condition. It won't stay in this condition here for a long, maybe another uh, trading session or two out here, uh, but it will go ahead and work that off before it moves down into that uh, 180-ish range. But you know what the uh, trading range is, and so it'll be easy to either play IBM to the upside or to the uh, downside. Right now, the Dow's off 45 S&P down to three and a half. We'll go take a look at the Russell 2000 when we get back because she is the weak link. And maybe it's not a she. Maybe it's a he. It's the Russell 2000, though, and it is weak. We'll be right back, folks. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors.
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus can Contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors, employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Steve, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Welcome back, folks. The uh, Dow's off 54. S&P is down 4. We're going to take a look at the Russell 2000. We're going to start off by taking a look at the 30-minute uh, chart of the uh, futures contract. Why? Well, because we've got this little, we know where the uh, bulls were hanging out inside the uh, Russell. It was all the way back here at 1030 in the morning on April the 18th on Thursday as it pushed down into a low of 895.70. But interest session, the bulls came in, they pushed the uh, price up, and it created a hammer candle. Nice, long, uh, shadowed uh, hammer candle out here that says, if the uh, Russell 2000 in the next six minutes on the 30-minute chart is able to close below 895.70, that would be breaking a hammer. Now, where you're really going to want to watch it close below is going to be this uh, last swing point low uh, out here at about 2.30 in the afternoon, right around 894.20. So the range you're looking at is 894.20 down to or up to uh, 895.70 out there. That's in the Russell 2000. That's on a 30-minute uh, chart out there. You break below that, and it's curtains. Well, it's curtains up until the uh, next set of swing points out there. If we go take a look at the uh, daily chart here, inside the uh, Russell, we'll see a hammer candle that it did break on the daily chart, and that was the April 5th level. That low out there was 907.20. Uh, that area was broken. We could see that price moved down right to the next set of swing points and bullish reversal candle. That was the morning star. That was a three-candle formation from February 25th, February 26th, and the uh, 27th out there. Right now you can see the uh, Russell, uh, that area on the daily chart that it would need to break before it moves down to its next level 
and its next level would be the uh, May 3rd, 2001 swing point. Would, uh, the Russell 2000 would need to close below on the futures contract, 892.60. That's the number to be watching there. If it uh, breaks, if it closes below that, what it says is uh, Russell will come all the way back and it will test out the May of 2011 swing point high out here. That, folks, right there, uh, that price, exact price point is May 2nd or May 3rd. Let's see here. May 3rd, I believe it is. May 3rd. May 3rd is 854.30. No, it's 872. It is May 2nd. 872, even Steven out there on the Russell 2000. Now, why is that important? Well, because the Russell 2000 broke out with conviction above its highs out there. And so now it would be normal to come back in that test that level. So expect that to be an area of strong support. If it's not, and it breaks back into the lower part of it range, Folks, that is sending just simply a huge message out there in the uh, marketplace because Russell is a confirmed is a confirmed breakout with volume out there. It's the only one that has uh, volume confirmed on the uh, breakout. Now, let's go take a look at the actual index itself, the Russell 2000. Uh, right now, we can see it's trading out at 901. Now, it does not, the actual daily chart itself, as we pull up the uh, Russell 2000, Give me a second here. You can see trade at 901.92. It does not have a bullish reversal signal. This set of candles right here on February 25th, 26th, and the 27th, that's not a morning star reversal candle formation uh, that is out there. So that's why it's important to be paying attention and to be able to put together and take a look. You don't have to trade the futures contract. But you certainly want to make sure that you've got access to it and that you're putting everything together. And on the Russell 2000, the actual daily index, it doesn't have a reversal pattern, a bullish pattern. What does that mean? Well, first, all it means that where price would normally get down to is that uh, level down in that February 26th. But if you're just basing your decisions only off the Russell 2000, you would be missing where the bulls really are hanging out. And you want to understand that as price moves down. You want to understand where the battles are going to take place. Because... If price closes below this, it will have met its mark on the 30-minute uh, chart. It will have met its mark on the uh, uh, daily chart on the uh, Russell 2000. And that says it moves down to the next swing point. Well, the next set of swing points gets you all the way back to December 27th. And also, if we come back to the May 3rd area, well, our, let's see, is it May 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 2nd? May, May 2nd? Give me a second. got to blow this up. Even my eyes can't see that. I don't know how you can. It is May 2nd, and that is the high of 868.57. So that's a real important number to write down on a pad of paper, 868.57 on the actual Russell 2000 index. If it uh, breaks this area here from February 26th, that is where it will head to. It breaks down below that. And that sets up, well, quite frankly, I would say that sets up, forget about moving down back to December 31st. That sets up running all the way back to November 16th on the Russell 2000. Uh, let's go take a look at the IWM. That is the ETF that uh, tracks. And let's go see what the IWM is uh, doing. Let's take a look at uh, volumes out here. You can see the IWM uh, trading back into that Morningstar candle formation out here. Uh, that is the uh, sessions now from February 25th to 26th and the uh, 27th out there. So that level of support is going to be $88.79. You break that, and again, the same thing, same pattern holds true. It'll come all the way back to that May 2nd level. The actual number on May 2nd here, so I give you the exact number, uh, where you're going to be looking for the next level of support is 85.74 gets below that and it is timber and it was a false breakout even though it had volume as it moved above that area on the uh, weekly chart 877-927-6648 we'll be right back Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives you Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. With Market Insights, nothing is left to guessing. With the market at record levels, volatility is here, and now is a perfect time to take advantage of a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights. As recently as March 26th, Tom advised his subscribers to liquidate their four short 
short-term equity holdings, closing out all four positions for a combined 15.9% profit. And on April 1st, Tom advised his clients to sell their longer-term position in AIG warrants, locking in more than a 40% profit in just that one trade. If you'd like to see the kind of newsletter Tom O'Brien sends out to his subscribers each morning, then sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern, and you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV, but if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.mob in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's n a d e x.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at tfnn.com. Welcome back, folks. The uh, Dow off 77 points right now, picking up a little steam. The S&P down uh, six. Let's go out to uh, Las uh, Vegas and uh, talk with uh, Gary. Gary, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you this morning? Good. My my question is about XLE. Uh, I've been trading DUG and DIG. Uh huh. And what what XLE looks like to you? Uh, are you are you still in the trade? Are you so looking to I, get? I saw, I saw DUG on Friday uh, about five minutes before the close because I saw what I thought were some large transactions on big transactions on down ticks uh, on Yahoo Finance intraday, uh -huh. and then I was, I was telling the screener I said you know what after the close those large trades weren't there anymore. <laughs> don't yeah don't i don't know what to tell you i would say that uh you know i don't i can't tell you how reliable yahoo finance is on right. on their data so uh you know it certainly 
if you're going to be trading like that, I'd suggest maybe taking a look at a uh, uh, maybe a more stable uh, source out there. But let's go take a look at the uh, XLE here. Uh, that is the energy sector, and that is exactly right. Gary is doing the right thing by uh, using the XLE as his guide for trading the DUG or the DIG. Those are the, I believe the those are the 200 percent, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct, Gary? Yes. Yeah, so they're the 200% inverse correlation. Well, the DUG is the inverse correlation, and the DIG is is the 200% long of the uh, of the uh, DUG. I'm sorry, of the XLE. Now, right now it's trading out at 74.45. It has completed a uh, one to 1.272 A to B equals CD down uh, there on the daily chart. So, are you trading more? Let me try to get this as be, uh, as well, Gary. Are you trading more from an intraday? standpoint or from a daily standpoint? You know, what's your term day, trade day, that you're looking I, at? I, actually, sometimes it's a position. So you know, I don't day trade. It's, okay. more, it's more of a short-term trade, or, and sometimes I might convert to uh, even over a month. Okay. So on the uh, if, you're, if you're taking a look at a longer-term trade on XLE, I didn't see a reason why you would go ahead and get out of the trade necessarily on Friday, and here's the reason why. Uh, number one, it, it, it's it's you know it's made an A to B equals C D, and that A point was up at the highs here on March the 14th. So that's your A point. Your B point is uh, the April 5th low, 75.99. There were 16.7 million shares. Now, as that B point was crossed, it was crossed with 24 million shares. That's what you like to see a swing point be taken out with. You certainly like to see a B point be taken out of it as well. Now, if you don't draw A to B equals CD, I, I would suggest that you do that, especially for a, well for any time period that you trade. And in this case here, the way that this exploded off of the C point, that was telling you that this is going to be more certainly more than a one to one A to B equals C D. Now you never know how far it's going to move to until you actually see the bulls show up, and they can't hide. They have to show them. They can't disguise themselves. Uh, they have to show up, and it'll be in the form of a reversal candle. Period. End of story. Now, what the XLE also did was it got back below the September 14th swing point. Uh, the red horizontal line going across my screen is the high. The black is the uh, is the uh, low. And it got back through that with conviction, with accelerated volume out there. And so being trading on the inside of the C to D leg, that says it wants lower prices. Getting back inside the uh, lower part of it range, its range, that says it wants uh, lower prices. And there's a candle here. The only bullish candle that actually showed up was right here on April 16th. That was your hammer candle. That could have been a signal right there to possibly have closed the trade. But once you got below that, which it did on that very next session, that was telling you there are no bulls in charge of the energy sector here right now. It, this truly has shifted to the uh, tide of the uh, bears are in control of this sector. They have been for quite some time. The energy sector was moving up, but the summation index for the energy sector was moving down. So that was giving us a, a clear signal that uh, there was going to be a, a shift. It's actually the same thing that's going on inside the consumer staple sector right now, the XLP, which is very strong when you take a look at price, but when you take a look under the covers, the summation index is pointed down. So that says when that does fall out of bed, that's going to fall out of bed in a pretty large way too. And so that's another heads up. Where I believe this is at least headed to uh, is going to be probably to this little open window out here, which takes you back to January 2nd and December 31st, just like the market itself wants to move back into that area. So that's really the last time that you see a real sign of any kind of a strength out there. And, and that gap has not been tested nor filled. So you're looking at the XLE. So from the longer term trade, you know, this, you, you were, you, in my opinion, you were certainly were in the right trade out there. Uh, now it becomes a question of okay when when do you when would you re-enter uh, that trade and for that you might have to go to more of a shorter term uh, chart out here but the daily you know is pointing to the uh, downward direction the uh, weekly uh, on this uh, Gary uh, the weekly if I switch to the weekly time frame it too is confirming what we've just been talking about now what the uh, weekly does it's got this beautiful uh, Gartley sell pad this point seven eight six Gartley sell pad and that actually set up back in April of 2011 and all that took place on the uh, move back up in March of 2013 was a retest of that area. 
kind of interesting. And, uh, you know, on the uh, weekly chart, you had a nice, big, bearish candle, bearish engulfing candle. Uh, you had a, a, bear, a bear separating line last week. So, again, you've got the uh, bears in, uh, con uh, in control here, and that really says on the weekly chart, November 16th is what it's got written all over it. Uh, there's a big bullish candle right here on January 4th. But, you know, so, so it's, it's saying the XLE wants to travel back to 69.57. If you can break through that area, 67.77 is what it has uh, written all over it. At least that's my read right now. Okay, so I just look at the, the inside the daily, inside the daily chart for, uh, to get back in. Yeah, you know, you might look at, uh, if we go take a look at, uh, the, now the other thing that you, that you want to do here, Gary, is uh, go to uh, Spider's Trust, uh, so go to the actual XLE, and uh, and take a look at the top. Quite frankly, I think it's if you look at the top five holdings, which should be uh, Chevron, uh, Exxon Mobil, Schlumberger, and I don't know who the other two are. And I could be wrong even on Schlumberger, but just go see who the top five holdings are, and uh, because they're going to represent more than fifty percent, go look at each of those charts and see what patterns are completing there. And that's how, if you if you like trading the XLE, uh, the DOG, and the DIG, then totally immerse yourself in the components and what's going on inside the components as well. And I think if you do that, no, I don't think. I know if you do that, you will uh, get better results, okay? Thank, thank you very much. Hey, you bet, and thanks so much for calling. And have a great day out in, uh, out in uh, I guess it's still called Sin City, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah. How's, how are things out there? How's, how's the real estate market out, out in Las Vegas? I mean, that was a, was a hard-hit area, and, and is, that, uh, is that bouncing back? And how's, how's business out there? It, you know what? It really depends on who you talk to. Uh, yeah. If you're, if you're buying, you can't get anything nice uh, at the price you think you should. And if you're selling, uh, there's no there's no bid. It's, just, <laughs> it, it's absolutely the craziest thing. So if you ask 20 different people, you'll get 20 different answers. Oh, geez. How long have you been out in uh, Vegas? 35 years. Uh, what a great boy. You've seen a lot of changes out there. Yes. It's a wonderful place to live. I, it is, you know. I mean, talk about uh, yeah, great weather, except when the winds are blowing out there. Those winds can be uh, a, a bit hot. And, uh, you know, I, I love Vegas. Now, I, I spent most of my time, we used to be in Vegas every other week. Uh, and that was uh, f uh, in the uh, 90s, all the way 1990 to uh, about uh, 1999 out there. And did business with all of the uh, casinos out there. So it was a great, uh, I, I don't mean gambling business, I mean business business. <laughs> Right, so, right. Yeah, so, so I saw a lot of changes. Now, I used to, what I loved about Vegas is uh, so when I was doing business out there, because I'm an East Coaster, uh, I would wake up. Uh, I would wake up early anyway, so I'd be up at 5 a.m. It'd be nice and sunny out there, and I'd yep. go down the uh, street. I'd play at the uh, dunes. I'd get in 18 holes, go work out, yep. take a shower, and I would be at my first appointment by by nine o'clock in the morning. It was a beautiful. Sure. That was a beautiful lifestyle. Yep, it's a great. Alrighty. Place. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, thanks for calling, Gary. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. You bet. You bet. So we got the Dow is off. Uh, Dow is off uh, seventy five right now. And again, the energy sector is certainly one of the weak sectors with inside the uh, S and P five hundred. Uh, as long as we are in this uh, uh, in this uh, tab on my system, we might as well go take a look at the uh, at a couple of the other sectors. Let's go look at the XLF as a example. The XLF here is uh, trading right now at 17.97. First, I'll go ahead and put up the uh, train just over to the weekly, uh, not the monthly, I want the weekly time frame out here. And on the weekly time frame here inside the uh, financial sector, it's really been traveling in this uh, rising price channel. This is now coming off of the December 2009 lows out here. The uh, candles that have been put in, even last week's candle, is not a uh, bearish uh, candle reversal signal yet. Uh, if you uh, get a close here below the week of April 20th, uh, not April 12th, the open of April 12th, I should say, which would be 1801, it's at 1795, then you'd have to start saying, okay, the weekly chart is suggesting a uh, possible bearish uh, pattern out here. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, daily uh, chart. Now, the, the reason why we take a look at this is simply as I come back here to 2009, here's the 2007 highs uh, back in the uh, $37 range. So you can see the financials as a uh, group, as a sector nowhere near 
you know, the S and P's over the two thousand seven highs. Can you imagine where the S and P five hundred would be if the uh, financial sector had also made it back to its two thousand seven highs? You talk about off to the moon. That would be the leader in the uh, clubhouse, but that is not the case out here. However, off of the uh, off of the November sixteenth lows out here, uh, uh, even off of the June lows, but certainly off of the November sixteenth lows, you can see the angle here. It's been pretty nice, been pretty steep. Again, this is a weekly chart inside the uh, financials, and there have never been any bears here uh, in, uh, in control on the weekly uh, chart here coming off those November 16th lows. Not a, a single not a single bear in uh, sight. Now, if we take a look at the uh, daily chart inside the XLF, just to get a little bit different uh, picture here, inside the uh, daily chart, what we are seeing is now what looks like the formation of an A to B equals CD down. Uh, that uh, A point is going to be the highs out here at 1865. Your B point is going to be the low from April 18th. And I don't know if the C point yet has been established. What we can see is that on Friday, what the XLF did was it moved up into the point three eight two retracement level of that A to B leg. That would have been the 1809 price point. The actual high of that session was 1809, coincidentally. Maybe not coincidentally. Uh, you can see it uh, opened up a little bit higher this morning. Uh, again, we're looking at the daily. It opened up at 18. Uh, 12 got up to 18, 13, and has continued to sell off. No big volume or anything uh, in the first hour and 16 minutes of trading. Nine million uh, shares. Now, if this is an A to B equals CD down, it's got 61 million shares that were created on April the uh, 16th. Now, what the XLF has done is it moved and it tested the uh, gap, and that's the uh, so. I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to get rid of a couple lines here so you can follow along. And what the XLF did is it moved into the uh, gap up. The gap up from March 4th to March 5th. Now the volume there, 66 million shares, is really your benchmark. That is the March 5th volume. And what it did on uh, Thursday last week was came down with 61 million shares. You see, the XLF still doesn't have the volume to bust through that area. And it's going to need now more than 61 million shares in order to do that. If it does, then you're taking a look at a uh, move down into at least this evening star, morning star uh, reversal pattern. That's at February 26th. So you can see that pretty much consistent amongst many of the uh, charts out there. Uh, so that's where it would head down to. And then the next area of uh, support here would be coming all the way back back to uh, January 2nd. But right now, we have not seen enough from a bearish, from a volume standpoint. Even though so, we saw volume off of the uh, top here on uh, uh, April the 15th, we saw it also inside the XLF. That's the first time we saw any real selling there. That was 72 million shares to the uh, downside. I won't say the only real selling. We saw 88 million shares on April the uh, 3rd as well. So we're starting to see indications, but the bulls are really putting up a good fight inside the XLF. It's why when you take a look at if you're going to go short, why you don't go short the strongest sector, because that strongest sector is where the uh, bulls are going to defend their position the uh, most or the strongest. So instead, just go take a look. If you go to Spiders, uh, uh, go to the Spiders website, SPDRS, uh, you will see each of the uh, sectors out there. It's just nine sectors that you have to uh, keep track of, which are the, you know, I, I put them up here on my screen. I'm always taking a look at those nine sectors to see what is going on. Uh, let's take a look at, the, at another sector. Let's look at the XLK before we go to break, because this is important important here because if the market's really going to croak here, if it's really going to bust, it's going to be the energy sector and the technology sector that will take it down. They're the two between the energy, financial, and uh, energy, financial, and technology sector. That's the big weighting inside the S&P 500 out here. So we saw the financials aren't ready to take it down. The energy sector most certainly is. But the technology sector, if we come back and we take a look at this black horizontal line coming across my screen, that is a level that is held as a, a support area. The technology sector on January 2nd moved up with uh, 15 million shares. Friday, on the move down when it was testing that area that has been tested before, only 8.6 million shares. Even on Thursday, the move down was 15 million shares, but really that 15 million shares being benchmarked against 15 million Still not enough. And this, folks, has been consolidating sideways ever since that January 2nd time frame. So it's a strong area of support and one that you really want to be paying attention to. Because if that area breaks, well, what you will likely see is you will see a move back into the November 19th, November 16th area inside technology. But even the technology sector right now is saying it's not ready to croak just yet. What do I think? I think the market moves up into uh, May Day, into May 1st, May 2nd, maybe May 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th. But we are going to see that May, sell in May cycle, begin in earnest. The question is, has it begun already? 
We'll be right back, folks. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market, something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar, bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the gold report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Let me tell you something, folks. I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. Yeah. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success. And it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability. Because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today. Because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away. Catch Basil Chapman as he uses his Chapman Wave methodology to call the markets. The Tiger Technician's Hour, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. We've got uh, six minutes before this 30-minute uh, session here closes out, but there's a lot that we can glean from the uh, markets by going and taking a look at the uh, futures contracts, by taking a look at the 30-minute uh, charts out here. So let's go do that. We'll do that here, see if we can go round robin here relatively uh, quick. Number one, we're going to start off taking a look at the uh, weak link in the marketplace. That's the Russell 2000 out here. We can see, boy, you, you know, you couldn't get a clearer picture of where the bulls are hanging out inside the uh, Russell. 
You come all the way back to that hammer candle at 1030 in the morning on April the 18th. That low, 895.70. We can see that area was tested on lighter volume on uh, the 3 p.m. and the 3.30 time frame on April 18th. And as we came into the uh, 1030 session here, it actually formed another hammer candle here live right now while we were on the uh, air. So at 1030, you got another hammer candle. That low got down to 902.50. Boy, the uh, bulls are hanging out right here on this line. So if you were sitting there playing a game and you were trying to understand where is it that the bulls or the bears are hanging out i can tell you all of the cavalry here in the uh, russell 2000 uh, is right down here where it's formed these hammer candles it's why you want to be paying attention right now that's a hammer candle right now if it were to close right here in the uh, next uh, four or five minutes here then you'd have two hammer candles folks that would actually be saying if you trade an intraday go ahead and fire away along and you close out your trade if you get a close below you got to use uh, again i would use the low really here of 89420 on the Russell 2000. But right now, we've got the uh, bulls. We know where they're hanging out. They cannot hide. Bulls or bears cannot hide. It is impossible. They cannot hide. All you need to do is understand and learn candlesticks out there. I really encourage you to do it. It may seem a little confusing at first, but that's when you actually have to say, hmm. I may be learning something, because that is really what it's all about. So that's on the Russell. So the weakness is shown. We know where the bulls are hanging out, and they've defended their position. Now let's go take a look at the uh, Dow. If we take a look at the uh, Dow futures, because the Dow, in essence, really has been the strength in the marketplace. The last couple of trading sessions, it has been weak. If the Dow closed right here, right here, right now, at 1056, and it's not 1056, it's a hammer candle right there. So now you know the bulls are also defending their territory. Last time we saw the uh, bulls was right here at 11 o'clock in the morning on April the 19th on Friday. That's when we saw that little uh, bullish uh, reversal signal, that bullish engulfing candle out there. So we know the bulls are hanging out at those lows. Now let's go take, now if you looked at these charts here, if you can follow along on Tiger TV, it might be difficult for you to see, but what you really should do is go join the Tigers Den. You can see these charts in HD, even when I've got them like this. Now, what well, we know we were benchmarking all the way back into, in this case here, you can either benchmark into the uh, time period, period of coming back into uh, uh, the uh, Friday's lows at 10.30 in the uh, morning. That would be one place to possibly benchmark price. But if you take a look at these four right here, let's say you were going to go ahead and take an intraday position and go along. Which of those four charts would you go for? as you take a look at it. The lower left, the Russell, the upper right, uh, I'm sorry, the upper right, the upper left, I should say, the uh, Dow, the upper right, the ES Mini, or the lower right, the NQ. That's right. You would take the lower right all day long, the NQ. Why? Well, now let's take a look at the S&P right here. If we take a look at that benchmark here off of the 10 o'clock session on a Friday morning, what we can see is that the ES Mini, even though it has given, it's not given us a bullish candle here just yet, unlike the uh, Russell, unlike the, uh, unlike the uh, Dow, uh, but what the S&P E-Mini has done is done a .618 retracement. If you go back and you take a look at the NQ out here, take a look at the retracement off of that same swing point. It has only done a .382 retracement. So right now, as we speak right now, it's the NQ that has the strength in the marketplace. Stay tuned, folks. Basil Chapman is up next, as we do on Marvelous Mondays. After Basil, we go out to uh, Larry Pesavento. After Larry, it's Daryl Martin and David White. And then the Tom O'Brien Show from 4 to 6, folks. Remember, the way you do anything is the way you do everything. Become a pioneer of your future versus a prisoner of your past. Have a great Monday, folks. Look forward to seeing you in the morning. Take care.